Welcome to Heritage Stories, visionaries and experimenters created by the Freedom's Way National Heritage Area. Each story introduces an inspiring individual whose actions, discoveries, and inventions shaped social, intellectual, and cultural innovation in Freedom's Way and America, changing the way in which Americans viewed the world. They made a difference. I'm your narrator, Jordan Rich, and today's story, Henrietta Swan Leavitt, trailblazing pioneer of modern astronomy. Henrietta Swan Leavitt made a discovery that forever changed the field of astronomy. Yet, Leavitt's accomplishments as a computer at the Harvard College Observatory are little known. Born in Lancaster, Massachusetts, July 4, 1868, Henrietta was the oldest of seven children of Congregational Minister Dr. George Roswell Leavitt and his wife, Henrietta Swan Kendrick. The prosperous family moved several times, including to Cleveland, Ohio, where Levitt attended Oberlin College, the earliest coeducational college in the United States. In 1887, the family relocated to Cambridge, Massachusetts. Levitt enrolled in the Society for the Collegiate Instruction for Women, later known as Radcliffe College, where many Harvard professors had informal teaching arrangements with women. She studied classical Greek, the fine arts, philosophy, analytical geometry, differential calculus, and in her senior year, astronomy at the Harvard College Observatory. Levitt graduated in 1892, earning a certificate equivalent to a Harvard College Bachelor of Arts degree, had she been a man. After travel abroad resulted in an illness causing deafness, Levitt returned to Cambridge and in 1895, with the financial support of her parents, offered to volunteer at the Harvard College Observatory. Eager for her free assistance, director Edward C. Pickering engaged her to study the observatory telescope's photographic plates, tabulating the color, position, and magnitude of the stars, with particular attention to the variable stars, stars that change from bright to dim and back over fairly regular periods. Levitt wrote a draft report of her findings before leaving the observatory for further travel, returning to her parents' home, now in Beloit, Wisconsin, a year later. But the stars called to Henrietta. She reached out to Pickering, hopeful for work at an observatory in a warmer climate that might be better for her health and hearing. Pickering offered her a paid position at 30 cents an hour as a, quote, computer back in Cambridge. She accepted and returned living with her uncle Erasmus Darwin Levitt at his villa on Garden Street, a short walk from the observatory. Now, computers in Henrietta's time were not machines, but mostly women who did the tedious, repetitive calculations and record-keeping. Working in a dingy room beside other well-educated women, she analyzed and documented the growing volume of telescope images and related notations made by men who worked at night with the telescopes. These women, known as Pickering's harem were rarely credited for their diligent research and intelligence. Levitt focused on the variable stars in the small and large Magellan clouds and identified 1,777 variable stars. Working with a magnifying glass, Levitt painstakingly examined the positive and negative photographic plates and observed a direct relationship between the time it took a star to go from bright to dim and its absolute brightness or magnitude and distance from Earth. Her discovery of the Cepheid variable period luminosity relationship, known today as Levitt's Law, documented the ability to accurately calculate distances from the Earth and was published in a 1912 paper under the name of Director Pickering. Over the course of her short life, Levitt identified over 2,400 variable stars. She developed the internationally accepted Harvard Standard, a standard of photographic measurement that ordered stars over 17 magnitudes of brightness. She was named head of stellar photometry at the Harvard College Observatory in 1921, but did not live long enough to enjoy her new role. Henrietta Levitt died of stomach cancer on December 12, 1921, at the age of 53, and is buried in the Cambridge Cemetery. Her death was largely unnoticed by the scientific community. 
In fact, four years after her death, the head of the Swedish Academy of Sciences sent a letter to her, writing, quote, Your admirable discovery has impressed me so deeply that I feel seriously inclined to nominate you to the Nobel Prize in Physics for 1926, unquote. However, as Nobel Prizes are not awarded posthumously, her work could not receive this prestigious recognition. Levitt's groundbreaking discovery, now over 100 years ago, paved the way for discoveries by many other astronomers, including Edwin Hubble, and shines brightly in a universe of women who changed our world. We hope you enjoyed this episode of Heritage Stories. Each story provides insight into the lives of individuals who were born or lived within the Freedom's Way National Heritage Area and were shaped in some way or another by their time here. These are individuals who have made a difference and were at the forefront of social, intellectual, and cultural innovations that relate to new things or ideas that the world, or at least Americans, had never seen before, proving enormously influential on American culture making Freedom's Way a region of firsts in American invention, thought, and design. To learn more, please visit freedomsway.org and let us know what you think 